Hi, this is Aaron Tweeten. I just wanted to show you a closer look at the new common blocks available in the WordPress 5.0 editor. Um, for this example, I've just got a test site that doesn't have any plugins installed, and I'm using the 2019 uh, default theme. I've also installed some test data from WPTest.io and the WordPress Codex. Uh, before moving uh, forward, I just wanted to show you a couple of settings um, that you can turn on that might help with using Gutenberg. As you can see right here, we've got the uh, WordPress interface. You see the sidebar over here and everything. If you go over to the top right uh, corner and this little ellipsis, I click on that, uh, there's a couple of settings here that might help. Uh, one is the top toolbar and what that will do is when you're over a block you'll see some of this uh, some of these uh, settings that uh, change depending on what kind of block you have selected. If you go back over here and click this option then all of that will be available right here. Now it's still um, uh, instead of showing uh, directly above the block, it will show in the top toolbar. Another thing that you can turn on is the spotlight mode. And what that will do is it will gray out uh, any content that you're not working on. Uh, so, for example, I have this block uh, selected, a uh, heading block. And then if I click over here, now the paragraph block is selected. Uh, the, the last setting is the full screen mode, and that's the one I'm going to leave on right now. Um, what that does is that that gets rid of the uh, WordPress uh, toolbar. Um, and uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, if you turn that on, you might think, oh, well, if I click this button, that will uh, bring you back the toolbar, as you might see in other interfaces. It actually doesn't. That actually takes you back to uh, the post uh, list. So uh, just keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to show you quickly uh, the different par uh, sorry the different uh, blocks that are available in the uh, common blocks area. So for example, I'm going to uh, click here and. If you go down to common blocks and open this up, you'll see the paragraph, heading, image, and a number of other ones. So I'm just going to show you quickly what all of these uh, do. Um, so right here is the paragraph block. And over on the side, you can see there's some uh, different settings. You can uh, change the text size. Um, you can select. Uh, something, you know, small to huge, um, and you can even uh, adjust the actual font size itself. Um, click Reset. Another option you have is the Drop Cat. Sorry, Drop Cap, not Drop Cat. Um, and so as I toggle that, now uh, this T... Uh, this drop cap is likely going to change depending on what theme you have installed and uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, another thing uh, to uh, understand about the way Gutenberg treats paragraphs is that each paragraph is its own separate block. So for example, um, I have a drop cap um, set for this block. Let me actually go back over here, turn off spotlight mode. There we go. Um, I have drop cap set for this block and notice that I click to edit it, it, the drop cap goes away. But this is a separate paragraph block. That's how Gutenberg treats everything. Every single paragraph is its own independent drop, or sorry, own independent block. So for example, I can change the font size for this if I wish. Um, and uh, I also have some additional uh, uh, settings here where I can change the background color. 
Um, I can change the text color. That's probably a pretty bad combination. Actually, this is kind of nice. It will warn you ahead of time uh, if you're using a combination that's not going to be very legible. Um, I believe that these colors are actually coming uh, from the theme settings, which I'm not going to go into right now, but uh, if you wanted to change it to something else, you could uh, put in the hexadecimal value here, and you could, uh, or change it to RGB, HSL. Um, it's it's uh, pretty sophisticated, all the stuff you can do. And then, you know, if you ever want to reset it, just uh, click clear. Um, and then this is some this is a uh, a setting that you'll see in many of the blocks. You'll see an additional CSS class. So if you um, if there was a class like button, maybe uh, that would work. I, I've actually not uh, played with this, so I'm not sure if you have to put the dot before it or not. Um, oh, there we go. All right, so I guess you, you don't. So here you can see it's uh, using a, a button class. Um, and uh, anyway, we'll just clear that out because we don't want to do that. So after, uh, par uh, sorry, after paragraph blocks, you have heading blocks. And so uh, this, this is the uh, first one, which is H2, and you can change it to whatever you want. You can change it. H1, H2, uh, all the way to H6. Um, I'm going to turn off the top toolbar just so you see what uh, what will normally show up uh, just above the block. So when you are creating the heading block, you'll see uh, H2, H3, H4, but you can select more over here if you want. You can change the text alignment. You can have it centered or right. Um, Another thing you can do is put in anchors. So for example, if uh, up at the top, you wanted to have a link to a, a special heading, you could put an anchor right here. Um, the next on uh, the next uh, kind of blocks that you have are list blocks. There's not a whole lot of options with this. It's pretty much uh, you're confined to uh, right here where it's got uh, um, unordered lists and ordered lists. Uh, there are no uh, description or definition lists, uh, which is a little uh, strange. I actually have not seen that anywhere in the default Gutenberg blocks. I'm, I'm wondering if that's something they're going to roll out later. Um, but, you know, you, you do have your basic lists. You can... Um, one thing, though, is uh, when you're uh, typing in these lists. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the return key right now, and then if I try to uh, press tab, um, it ends up actually going to the next block. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So that's why when you're in here, you have to um, actually press this button to indent the list item, and this is. This is another one of the complaints that I've uh, read about in forums is uh, about the accessibility of, of uh, the Gutenberg editor. Um, there, if you go over to the, go over here and you click on keyboard shortcuts, um, it will uh, give you some uh, shortcuts. I have not actually uh, done much with this. This is similar to the shortcuts that you probably have used at the previous editor, um, but I just wanted to uh, let you know about that. The next kind of block that you have is an image block, and uh, this is uh, this is not really uh, uh, that complicated. I'll just give you an example of what, what it looks like to uh, put one in, so I'm going to insert a block uh, above, and uh, what's nice is that uh, it's actually one of the most common blocks there are, so you can just click over here. Um, because I'm using test data, I've already got 
uh, a bunch of images installed so I'm just going to uh, click on this one it's got it got a uh, caption and everything and then click select and so as I uh, I put this image in here uh, you can see you can change the alt text you can change uh, the size so if I wanted to uh, select the thumbnail uh, this image is only uh, 640 pixels wide but uh, you can uh, change the link to go to a media file um, and then uh, like uh, like with many of the other blocks you can add an additional CSS class uh, one neat little feature though about uh, this that depends on the theme that you're using is notice how you've got these different uh, alignment settings now these three right here the align left center and uh, right are ones that are common to what we've experienced before but there's this new one called wide width what this does um, is it will stretch it to the width of the page content and then there's a full width and what that will do is it will actually stretch out to the uh, width of the entire border so you've got a lot of uh, flexibility here uh, which is nice and then of course if you want to uh, get rid of the block you can just uh, click remove um, next with uh, the common blocks are uh, quotations and there's actually two different uh, types of quotation blocks there's the quote block and then there's the pull quote block and I'll cover pull quotes in another movie uh, but this is the one that you will see in the uh, common blocks area so for example in here you're uh, you set the quotation and then you can set the citation and then if I open this up uh, really quick um, there's two styles available um, I'm guessing that they probably are determined by the theme that you're using so if I click the large style and notice how it looks a little bit different I'll go back to the original one um, and then uh, this uh, CSS class is actually one that was uh, put in automatically so I'm gonna remove that see what happens okay nothing nothing happened there I'll just put it back in there just make sure nothing breaks anyway that the uh, quotation block and then we have the gallery block um, this is the one that uh, I I personally think needs a little bit of work um, it is not as robust as uh, the previous WordPress editor, especially if you're using Jetpack. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that if you if you link these uh, images to the media file, um, it will not automatically create a light box for you. That might change in the future, but uh, that's just some, something to keep in mind. You may need an additional plug-in or something like that. Uh, but it's it's not too complicated to uh, to uh, set up. In fact, I'll just uh, remove this and then create a new block. Um, I'll make sure that I'm putting in the right spot. Okay, so I'll go to the image gallery. I'm just going to uh, select four images, uh, create new gallery, and then insert the gallery. So what you're able to do with the gallery is, uh, for example, you have these width controls. So you could have it so that it stretches the width of the page. Um, you can also uh, adjust the columns so for example if I just wanted uh, two columns wide or say I wanted to have the images stacked on top of each other 
oops, okay, there we go. Um, so what happens is when I select uh, three columns, it, what it will do is it will uh, uh, have three across and then uh, this one at the bottom. Uh, another thing is I can uh, adjust whether or not they're cropped, so that that affects uh, some stuff. So that's how the galleries work. Uh, again, if you've used uh, other uh, galleries, say like Jetpack, uh, you might find this uh, not as sophisticated as what you're used to, uh, but it does work. And it will put in captions like, uh, if, you, if you have the captions in the media editor, it will pull those in automatically. Uh, that's what I had before. Um, Okay, so the next the next block is uh, allows you to add audio files. So, say if you have a a podcast or something, this would be a way to put it in there. Um, with this, uh, you've got some controls here, like the autoplay and the loop, and then you can uh, uh, set some preload settings. Um, you can also add a caption, and I've noticed that with the, many of the media blocks, you can add a caption to pretty much anything. Um, after that is the cover block. Now this is one that I, I actually think is pretty cool. Um, this is uh, gives you some functionality that's similar to uh, what a lot of page builders have. They'll have a, uh, some large image. Uh, stretching across and and then uh, overlaid text. It's not as sophisticated, but it does give you some of that functionality. So, uh, for example, in this case, uh, the cover block, um, all you do is you, you select an image. So I can select a different image. I'll just change it to this one. And you can see um, that it, it basically just uh, pops it in there. Uh, you have some settings over here, like the fixed background, which will sort of give you a parallax effect. Not exactly um, a parallax, but uh, very similar. Um, then you can change the overlay color. So I can uh, mess around with the ones I want. You can change the background opacity. So say if you want the background to be really faint, and your overlay color to be uh, really thick, you can, you can do that. And then if you wanted to add an additional CSS class, you could do that. Next is uh, files. And um, this is kind of an, um, a new one. I'm sorry, let me take that back. It's not kind of a new one. It is a, a new one. Um, what this allows you to do is it allows you to create a, a button uh, uh, link to a, uh, a file that is in your media library. And so in this case, uh, what I've got is I've got a, I'm not exactly sure what I have here. I'm going to edit it. Okay. So what I've got is I've got a, a link to a, a page called Static Pages. Or not a page, a uh, screenshot called Static Pages. And then what will appear is this download uh, button. And um, I can change that to whatever I want. You know, download me. Uh, I can. Um, have this uh, download button visible and then let's see what it actually looks like from the yeah so something something that does happen that you have this uh, download button but uh, the the, the uh, link to the file is still visible so I'm not sure if that I'm not sure if there's a way to turn that off. Um, perhaps if you had uh, a CSS class like hide, 
of course, uh, that seems to be screwing up the uh, button class, so that's probably not a good idea. But anyway, the 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 big thing is that you can have a uh, downloadable link to a file. So say if you had a PDF on your website, that would be something you could use it for. Uh, the very last block that's in the common blocks is uh, the video uh, video block. And what this is, is it uh, allows you to place a video that you've uploaded to your media library. Now, this is not the same as embedding a video from a third-party site like Vimeo or YouTube. Um, this is one that you're actually uploading to your site. So this is one that came with the test data. And um, again, I can, I can change the controls here. I can make it like full, full size. I can um, have a caption down here if I want. Uh, you also see some uh, different video settings. So let me actually turn two of these on and then also click the muted. And then we'll go preview what it looks like. So this is way down at the very bottom. So you see down here, you've got this video that's playing. And uh, again, this is thanks to uh, test data from uh, WPTest.io. So anyway, so that's a, a look at the common blocks that are available in the new WordPress editor. Uh, go back up to the top. So you have paragraphs. You got headings, you've got your lists, mainly unordered lists and ordered lists. Uh, you've got Im images, single images. You've got quotes. You've got image galleries. You've got audio files. You've got the cover images. You have uh, links to files, and then you have uh, video blocks. Anyway, I hope you find that helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me uh, or uh, at my website at aarontweeten.com. Thanks.